There are many ways to estimate body fat. Some methods use special machines or calipers, while others rely on picture comparisons or online calculators. But no matter what method you use, it's important to remember that it's just an estimate, not a true measurement. For more on that, check out the video, How to Weigh In on your Avatar Dashboard. But today, we're gonna cover three ways Avatar members should assess their body fat percentage. Let's get started. All right, so today I have Kayla with me and we are going to be measuring body fat using calipers. So calipers are probably the most preferred method that we have other than visual estimation, truth be told. Um, there's a lot of benefits to using the, these. One is the consistency that you get from measurement to measurement because you can see the actual changes in millimeter thickness of the skin folds that you're measuring. So make sure that you pay attention to the instructions that you get on your calipers because they're all gonna be a little bit different. For example, this AccuMeasure caliper will click when you have the right measurement. So if I'm gonna measure my hand, I can press down on this and listen, and there's a little click. And theoretically, I could keep going and crush my hand down. So if you did the same thing on a skin fold, it's gonna read false for how low your body fat is. So with that being said, we're gonna start with a three site skin fold method for Kayla. And the first side that we're going to measure is the thigh and you wanna keep all of your measurements on the same side of the body. So for instance, Kayla's right-handed, so we're gonna stay on the right side. So you can reference our guide, uh, looking at the tool tips on the side for each site to give you more detailed instructions on how to do this. But for the thigh, what we're looking at is the midpoint between the knee and the hip. So you take a vertical skin fold right here, and with a thigh, it's thicker tissue, so you really have to, to grab it but once you have the, the fold, you can pinch down and measure. So for my first measurement here, I've got um, 22. So what I'm gonna do is jot that down. I'm jotting that down, 22. And I like to do multiple measurements to make sure that we have an average. So sometimes it can read high, sometimes it can read low. So I'm gonna take the same spot, mid thigh, vertical fold, there we go, got the pinch, it's 22 again. So we're gonna do this one more time. All right, same thing. Vertical fold. All right, so we actually have a little bit of a difference here. This time it was 20. So you can see 20, 20. <laughs> we're gonna jot that down and then take the average. So the next side that we wanna measure is the tricep. So Kayla, could you spin around? And I'm going to shift over here. So we're looking at the midpoint between the top of the shoulder and the elbow. So that's right about here. So let's go ahead and grab the fold. All right, there's the click. And so we have 15 for the first reading. And so the last one that we're gonna do is the iliac crest, or this might be super iliac. Um, so what we're looking at is a spot about an inch to an inch and a half above the hip on the right side of the body. And so what you wanna do for this fold is take a diagonal, about at a 45 degree angle fold, running towards the midline of the body. So for this one, we're going to take that fold, pinch, We have our first reading at 17 this time. All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is take these numbers and plug them into our body fat calculator in the computer. The exact location that you take each skin fold will be slightly different depending on which test you choose and whether you're a man or a woman. Refer to the pictures next to each box where you enter your skin fold measurements on the body fat weigh-in page for visuals on how to measure each site. Then plug the values in and the system will use those numbers to estimate your body fat percentage. Keep in mind that while calipers are more accurate and reliable than other methods we'll cover soon, there is a downside. For best results, you'll need a partner to help you and you'll need to make sure that you take the measurements at the same spot each week. For that reason, it may be tricky to stay consistent with this method. BIA scales and handheld devices can also be used to estimate your body fat percentage. They're much faster and easier to use than the skin caliper test, but they're not as accurate. 
They work by sending a light electrical current through your body and judging the speed of the current as it travels through different tissues. That's where BIA gets its name, Bioelectrical Impedance Analysis. But it's also why those pacemakers or electronic medical implants can't use the BIA machines to calculate body fat. As you can see, this test can be simple as standing on a special scale or holding a device that's available at many commercial gyms. That simplicity is great, but it comes at the cost of accuracy. These devices are easily confused by things like hydration status or if there's food in your stomach. So, to keep readings consistent, it's important that you take your measurements first thing in the morning after using the bathroom and before eating, drinking, or exercising. Another source of error comes from how BIAs are designed. Most only use two electrodes, located either at each foot or at each hand. Either way, their measurements tend to skip whole parts of your body. For instance, a BIA scale might send a current through the legs alone, skipping the upper body. This means that, depending on where you carry most of your fat, your body fat measurement might read higher or lower than it really is. Finally, there's the body fat slider, which is the easiest, quickest, and most convenient of the three methods. All you have to do is take a picture of yourself that morning and compare it to the image on the slider. By dragging the slider until it matches your own image, you can estimate your body fat percentage for that week. Of course, the downside to this method is that it's highly subjective, and it can be difficult to see changes on a week-to-week -week basis. Taking back and front pictures before assessing what your body looks like can help you keep you accurate and accountable. Plus, they can double as progress pictures along the way. Using measuring tape is another way that you can measure body fat. It's pretty simple. All you have to do is measure the narrowest part of the neck, the narrowest part of the waist, and the widest part of the hips. So we're gonna demo this and start with the hips. And you can use all kinds of different, you don't have to use this tool. You can use uh, just regular flat tape to measure it out. So we can look at it and see that it is about 40.25. So I'm gonna make a note of that for hips. Now we're gonna move on to the waist. So if you could take that. Thank you. All right, so right at the nearest part, we are at 30.25. And finally, we're gonna use uh, this tape for the neck measurement. So if you could, thank you, get the hair. <laughs> Pull that around. So this is narrowest part of the neck. So don't try to like, you know, flex and pull your neck up or anything. Just keep it nice and relaxed. And this is 13.5. So all we have to do next is just plug that into our calculator and it'll spit out a result for your body fat. For all of these tests, it's essential that you perform them first thing in the morning at the same time that you weigh yourself. As I mentioned, it's best to do them right after you go to the bathroom, but before you eat or drink anything. This will keep your results consistent and help the avatar system propel you toward your goals. That's all for now, but if you have any questions, you can always reach out to our member success team and they will be happy to help you.